You know, it's always hard to decide when to winterize my motorcycle. When to get it ready for that winter storage. You, you want to be able to ride up until you can't ride anymore, but you need to be able to ride a little bit to get it ready for storage. Today is November 8th, I think, and the fact that it's like 70 degrees outside today is amazing. We usually don't get so lucky in November, but this year, this past week has been awesome. And we just had snow a couple weeks ago, so we got pretty fortunate to, to have this warm up back this week. I've gotten a few miles on the bike over the week and uh, I've been pretty happy. So I'm pretty confident in saying that today is about the end of it. Tomorrow is going to be pretty warm still, but it's going to be storming. And after that, it looks like the temperature is going to fall right off and we're going to be down in the 30s. I think I'm ready to put it away for the winter. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you what I do to my bike to get it ready for winter storage. Now I did fill this up with gas the other day. So I mean it's pretty close to a full tank right now. That's basically the first step for the day. So uh, let's get into that. Well, now we've got the gas tank full on the bike. We've added stabilizer and the fuel is good to go. We want to keep that tank filled up over the winter so that there's no room for moisture because moisture in a tank, not really a good thing. The other thing is we took it for a little clip. So now the engine's nice and warmed up and we're ready to change the Welcome aboard, Captain. Well, now that the engine's warmed up, we're ready to change the oil. And apparently, another project I'm going to have to fix. Rule number one when you're about to do an oil change, don't wear a nice shirt. So, I'm going to do a quick change. Alright, so we want to change the oil for the same reason. We don't want that nasty oil sitting in there all winter long. So, yeah, we gotta get rid of that. So when you're gonna do an oil change on the bike, it's pretty important to have oil on hand, which I do, Spectro, and an oil filter. I guess I'm running to the Harley shop. We're also gonna change the primary fluid. For that, I'm just gonna use the old Sin 3 from Harley Davidson, and we need 38 ounces, so just over one bottle. I've got that. I just need to grab a filter. And I'm good to go. So, see you in a bit. So, I decided to go ahead and do the primary. But as you can see from the footage down there, probably went ahead to, it still looks pretty good. And that's after two seasons of riding. So that's the, uh, that's the Spectra gear oil that I use in that primer.
One thing I forgot to mention is check the air pressure in your tires. We're gonna get into tires in a little bit, but it's a good idea to do that while you're at the gas station. So that way, if you don't have an air compressor at home, it's taken care of. So yeah, check the air pressure, and if you need air in your tires, air them up before you put it away. But now we've got the oil and the primary fluid changed. Transmission fluid is good for a while yet. So I'm not going to worry about that this year, but it's time to wash the bike. So let's get after it. Not too long ago, I did a video where I washed the motorcycle with dish soap. I'm not saying that's a good idea just to clear things up. I'm just saying it's possible in a crunch. So people got kind of bent out of shape about that video. I just wanted to clear that up. Today we're using Spectro motorcycle wash. Well, we're trying to use Spectra motorcycle wash, but it's empty, so. All right, a few things to go over real quick. A, or first, if you guys have any questions or need to know anything about the oil change or the primary fluid change, I have videos for both of those, so I'll link them up here or down in the description, whatever. Uh, so you can check those out if you need to. Pretty simple step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it, so. Uh, I think they're pretty good. I've gotten a lot of compliments on them anyway, so hopefully that helps if you need it. Second is we're going to talk about covers and stuff in a little bit as well, but just to be clear, in case you didn't realize this, like make sure your Harley is or your motorcycle is dry before you put a cover or anything on it, before you put it into storage. Make sure it's 100% dry because there's a lot of places that moisture can sit and obviously you don't want any moisture anywhere near your motorcycle during storage. That's the point of changing the fluids and topping off the gas tank. We want to get rid of all moisture, condensation, anything like that that's going to wreak havoc on any part of your motorcycle. So now we've got the fluids done, we've got the bike washed, it's time to get it into the garage. There's only a few things left to talk about that'll be pretty quick and we'll get into that soon. This is where we're gonna start talking about tires. Ideally, if you can get your tires off the ground, that's your best case scenario. Because if it's sitting there all winter long, your tires can get flat spots, which you don't want. Before you get your bike put away, it's a good time to inspect things like tires and things like that as well. That way you know what you're gonna need in the spring. I already know that I have 20,000 miles on these tires, so it's time to put new tires on in the spring. I also know that I've been fighting with a bad battery for the last two seasons. I've just been really babying it, keeping it on the tender all the time to keep it charged, so I really need to do a new battery next spring as well. So, just a couple things to talk about. So if you don't have a motorcycle lift or any way that you can keep your tires off of the ground, what I do is get some carpet squares, especially if you can get like thicker ones. These are pretty thin, um, just rugs basically. But if you can get some actual carpet samples, like nice fluffy carpet samples, it's still not going to be perfect and you should still try to move your bike around periodically throughout the winter, back it up, push it forward, whatever. So it's not just sitting in one spot because that's how the flat spots are going to form. But yeah, I use some carpet squares, park it on there, 
and uh, at least it's not on the cold cement that way so it helps a little bit or it should help that's my thinking anyways I'm just gonna kind of tidy up this area real quick get my carpet in place and what I like to do is push the bike into the garage backwards because then it leans towards the wall that gives me more space for other things during the winter since I'm not using the bike at all anyways this is basically just kind of an I like this is what I do for winter storage it's probably gonna be different for you or it may be different for you one thing here is my garage is under my house so it doesn't get super super cold it does I mean it gets maybe 35 40 degrees is probably the coldest it gets so some of the things that I do you may not have to worry about if you're storing it in like a really cold area you may want to do more like possibly pulling your battery completely out I'm gonna put it on the tender but you might have to pull your battery completely out and store it like in your basement or someplace where it's warmer but yeah this garage it's not extremely well insulated but it does stay warmer than if I was to say stick the motorcycle in my shed so just a couple things I wanted to go over with you real quick I just have the coolers running right now. Just trying to dry out the vents a little bit. Um, I did have to run it and blow some of the water out of the exhaust so that there's not just water sitting in there. So hopefully that's good enough. But yeah, we're almost ready to move on. All right, one of the next things we wanna do is if your bike is like this one and it has liquid cooled heads, we need to check the radiator coolant. I have to get a tester, so we're gonna skip that for this video, but I can go back and do it anytime. I just wanna make sure that the freeze point is still good enough where it's not gonna freeze and crack my heads. Otherwise, we'd have to do a uh, coolant flush. We're gonna throw the battery tender on it, and that's about it. You can choose whether you want to put a cover on it or you want to be able to walk past and stare at it every day that's one reason it's very important to wash it because if you're looking at it every day and there's bugs and stuff all over it it's going to drive you nuts plus you got to get those things off you can't let them sit on there all winter it will hurt your paint big time i usually leave the cover off because most winters i'm doing things to the bike i'm adding something or changing something i don't know this year unless i can come up with some real money and be able to do suspension or a new seat i'm probably not going to make a video about installing a new seat just so you know um or maybe cams i've got a list of things i want to do but they're all big dollar items so i don't know might not be doing any projects to the bike this winter it's just I don't know what I'm going to do for content, but <laughs> there you go. If you are going to put a cover on it, I would go through your tour pack and your saddlebags and make sure that there's nothing in there that you need because it'll just be more difficult to get to it once the cover's on. But if you're just going to leave it open, no worries. Have fun. That's going to do it. Stay safe out there as always. Have a good one. I'll catch you next time right here on Touring Midwest. Oh.